I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is my best man at my wedding, Seb Kenna. Uh, yeah, really, will you? Cool. All right, cool. I got two to say yes now. <laughs> Don't ask me which one was more important. Is she in the room? Okay, we're good. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm Seb, Sebastian Kinna. <clears throat> uh, we're the, uh, the, the fruity guys from the Wi-Fi thing. And, um, you know, we typically start these with our mission statement, which is quite simply to make it do the thing. It's kind of the motto of our products. Uh, this year we decided... Actually, well, you know, okay, that might be kind of unofficially our motto. We have many unofficial mottos like make it so easy even an FBI agent can use it. Love you guys. Uh, the clicky boonty interface does make it quite simple. Uh, but we actually have a real mission statement this year and I'm, I'm proud to say that this is it. That we are inspired to elevate the infosec industry by educating, engaging, and encouraging um, an all-inclusive community, one where all hackers belong. And I'm really proud of that. Uh, but we didn't just upgrade our mission statement this year, we actually, uh, yeah, we actually upgraded the team. So uh, if you guys want to come on stage, maybe. It's gonna be yeah. So it's, it's, well, we'll get there. Come on. You need to bring your bags. You're fine. Or bring him. Hi. So I've been doing the development for a few years now. Um, and at some point I said I really need help. So. Uh, oh, I, I was going to help. I really was. A and I wrote some bash scripts. And how did that turn out? I'm really sorry about the land turtle. Yeah. I'll make Seb fix it. No, 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 no. You. <laughs> you get to fix it. I don't want to. So I'd like to announce or introduce the new Hack 5 gear team, Foxtrot, Couch Fail, and, I'm sorry, Couch Fault, and Corbin. <laughs> Uh, couch Fault got his name after struggling with many a seg fault and uh, ended up that way. Passing out while debugging. Yeah. These guys have worked tirelessly for the last, I don't even know how long, but I know for the last week it's been till something AM every day. And uh, I just want to hear a huge round of applause for this team because they've done some incredible work that we're all about to enjoy. Do you guys want to say something? I'm on. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's British and very, uh, very much so. <clears throat> oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say thank you. First of all, huge thank you to Seb and Darren. I owe you my job and so much of what I know today. And everyone at DEF CON is my first DEF CON. It's been really a wild experience and especially without the sleep. Um, I just could not be more happy to be here and surrounded by the community that I am and doing what I'm doing. So thank everyone. He, he's just excited he gets to stand here and doesn't have to work right now, so. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna need a bigger cube. Oops. Okay. Um, all right, so this has been a very big year for Hack5. We've got a lot of Hack5 gear updates. We're going to breeze through some of these until we get to the main event. Uh, and let's start with uh, my favorite illustration of the year that happens to also be a product, uh, the Bash Bunny. Yeah, so, so we launched that uh, last year. Um, and yeah, we, we lose track of these things, so let us know if we're wrong about our own products, please. Um, so, so we've done a couple of things in the past year or so. The first thing is like it was already agent proof and we kind of at the last Well, talk, no, 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 no. You needed to be able to copy and paste a file from GitHub. Which is hard, right? So we reduced the GitHub part and just got it down to the copy and paste. 
So now you copy and paste a .exe or a, a bin to your, you know, bash bunny and you dot .slash it and... Or you double click it. Yeah, for Windows users. And you're done. Yeah, that's, that's that. So the cross-platform update or Windows, Mac, Linux allows you to grab all of the latest firmware updates for the bash bunny as well as all of the payloads from the GitHub repository and just store them on the device um, so that you don't have to go searching for them. And it's just one of those little niceties that kind of refines these products and it's the, an idea of like the future of kind of where we're heading for that kind of seamless like, oh, here's all the stuff. Don't have to think. We've also added a bunch of things that like extend the default behavior. So we have a thing called like extensions for the bunny scripts, one of which is like the, uh, I think the one we chose is the OS fingerprinting because that's one of the, I guess, more intuitive ones and, and most usable ones. But we've also done stuff so that you can override uh, things like arming mode, depending on your scenarios. You might not want to drop a bash bunny somewhere and have them be able to flip into arming mode and do whatever, like see whatever you're doing. Right? So you can override these configurations now. Uh, we also have the ability to read caps lock states, which if you're crafty with payloads and I'm like winking and nudging, you can do some really interesting things. And it's not just caps lock, it's, you know, any hid lock state, obviously. So num lock, scroll lock, and the other one no one remembers. No, I'm joking. I think those are the only ones. Sure. Uh, there's also the ability to inject straight up alt codes overhead. So that's important if you want to, like, send emoji. <laughs> Mm, not, not emoji, but you know, you've ever you've ever like dealt with internationalized keyboards, and you need to be able to like inject that one character that you keep getting wrong because everyone's using a weird keyboard, like the Brits. Yeah, right. Um, like so, so this guy over here, uh, Foxtrot, uses a keyboard where if you hit Shift Four, you don't get an octothrope or a pound. You get this like British pound sterling thing, and, and the enter key is like shaped weird. Yeah, it's wrong. ISO. Wait, we love ISO, but <laughs> yeah. So this gets around that so you can literally just send that character. Yeah. And overall, I think the, the Bash Bunny has now got a very, very large thriving community behind it and is just, uh, yeah, doing well. We really enjoy it. We've got a couple of cool updates planned for it, I think, and uh, yeah. Cool. Should we let them sit? Do you guys want to sit down? Okay. That means you have to leave and you have to start coding again, right? Okay. All right, speaking of uh, things that are uh, mostly working, uh, the, the other big updates on the uh, uh, land turtle side were mostly bug fixes, and I think that just kind of shows that, you know, it works. It does what we set out to do. Uh, our big release last year around this time was the land turtle 3G, and while I can't relay any of the stories that have been privately told to me about the interesting places these have been, I'm just very happy to know that they are either have been to interesting places or in many cases still in very interesting places doing their mission of exfiltrating data over an out of band 3G backhaul. Uh, what else? The packet squirrel. We teased this in this very room or the wireless village room last year and I'm happy to say that the packet squirrel has landed and is very much doing our motto of making it do the thing um, and it's just that. I mean, aside from one firmware update to... Add wireless support so, it, you know, it doesn't have wireless built in and people ask for wireless dongles so... There you a go. Another beautiful example of how when people come to us, come to Seb and say, and come to the devs and say, hey, it would be really great if, and then there's a firmware update, and now it does that, so we encourage that. Isn't it nice that's not just me anymore? You can approach these guys now, which is easier because you can just tell them to do things and they do it. Right, and if you stick around, you can abuse them at 7 o'clock at the Hack 5 meetup. Stay tuned. Well, you need to, f you can't. They're not for sale, you can't use them. <laughs> right, you can't right, right, talk right. talk to them, uh, the you can. Uh, yeah, it's a limited warranty, honestly. Um, so uh, lastly, you know, the little quacker that could, uh, the USB rubber ducky is getting its, uh, you know, its first kind of glossing over in several years because, again, a device that just did what it was set out to do. You copy an inject.bin to the SD card and it types it. And we've been very happy with that functionality for years. Now, we uh, simplified kind of similar um, functionality in the Bash Bunny and we're taking some of those lessons learned and we're doing a first party firmware for the USB rubber ducky that's going to allow it to perhaps type without using an inject.bin, just copy over a script.txt, human readable. Right, we're also adding, do you say mass, do you say mass storage? Not yet. No, okay, cool. I can't see the notes. Um, 
Yeah, so, uh, so we're adding mass storage support, which is something that exists in like a, a second party, third party firmware, but you know, we wanted to have one native, we wanted to make a bunch of changes to the Ducky uh, firmware anyway, so that's what we're working towards. Um, the other thing that we have that's new in first party is, and uh, this was Dallas's first project, um, which is amazing, but a, uh, a uh, single HTML uh, Ducky encoder. So all you do is you, you don't open the HTML file, it doesn't hit any servers, you can encode and decode your Ducky scripts and inject up ins. Decode? No. Not yet. Cool. Will be. Um, and, uh, sorry. Right, so just encoding. But either way, it's, it's, uh, it can be hosted on your device, so you can always keep it with you. You can do it on Android, Linux. So now you don't have to go to some you know, third-party website to type in your Ducky script and get an inject.bin. And I know everybody loved the Java attack jar, duck encode dot jar slash dash I tack capital T, right? Everybody See, loved that, right? To Darren, that's magic, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> anyway, because we all have uh, the JRE installed on our, never mind. Anyway, so, um, uh, fantastic work there, and give it up for Dallas on that. I'm really excited for that feature. But this is the wireless village, so really let's talk about our favorite fruity friend, the Wi-Fi pineapple. Uh, it's been a big year for the Wi-Fi pineapple. It has. It's amazing what can happen when, when we, what we originally tried to do was, I, I went to Seb, I hit control A, I hit control C, and I was trying to just hold down control V, Nothing was happening, but but uh, but now that he's cloned or something, uh, we've got a lot done in 2018, and so we're going to start off that off by talking about the core of the Wi-Fi Pineapple, its engine, Pine AP. Seb. Okay, so that's actually where where Couchfault got his name from because Segfaults happened, and he had to rewrite Pine AP for me, um, and you know, lots of sleepless nights, uh, sleepless nights. You wouldn't know anything about those. Right. Um, many of the nights that I can't pronounce later. Um, so that's how you got his name. But we did a complete rewrite of PineAP, which basically allows us to do a complete restructure, a complete re-architecture, and a complete rewrite, which is getting re-rewritten, but let's not talk about that. Um, but uh, see, they, they laugh because they know the pain that they're in. Um, and that makes me sound really cruel. I'm not, I'm not like that. He is German, however. And he's a Virgo engineer, triple threat. Right, so uh, we did a complete rewrite of Pine AP, which allowed us to do things like, uh, like Well, for instance, live. you can inject he uh, raw hex frames now. Right, yeah, you can do that. I think more exciting are things like live recon mode, which is a way to uh, you know, just see who, everyone knows air dump in here, I hope. Can, can I see hands? Because if I don't see everyone's hands, then. Okay, yeah, visualizing the battlefield is really important. You know, asset management, super important. As the attacker, even more fun if you can actually understand like who's connected to what. Right. And so, you know, we, we like the approach that we had before where, you know, you kind of did a scan, you got a snapshot in time, but we also kind of wanted to have direct feedback, instantly being able to interact with the uh, response, you know, being able to sort them, to be able to filter them, and to be able to say this is what we want to, what we want to do with the results. So that's why we added a, a live version of it, which the new version of PineAP enabled us to do. You can also do it lots of little niceties like saving your Pine AP um, or sorry, your uh, recon sessions so that you can load them up later and, and be able to download them. Yep, no more losing your recon results. You can also now do OUI lookup. I know that's something a lot of you guys wanted to have like natively built in so you can just click on the MAC address and get OUI information. You can also tell if a MAC address has been locally assigned or if it's been assigned by the hardware vendor, at least with high probability. Which kind of gives you an idea of whether or not it's like a randomized MAC, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you can also make notes on your specific uh, SSIDs and Macs, which to the pen tester is like, this is direct feedback from you guys last year saying, hey, what would you like to see? And you say like, um, you know, I see some heads nodding, like I've got this client and I'm trying to keep track of all of these Mac addresses and is this a CFO or is this a CISO, is this in scope, is that out of scope? And uh, so now just being able to keep tabs on all of those different devices and know what they are across the entire unified dashboard, be able to see like within the different modules, who's what, uh, is really helpful. Yep. Um, Seb. My eyes are really bad and he's got this tiny little thing mm -hmm. here, which is, I don't think that should be allowed. Uh, it's like a um, netbook, it's fun. Remember when netbooks were cool? Demo, yeah, demo would be good. You know yeah. what we forgot? What? Where's the pineapple? <laughs> Henry, do you have the pineapple? Sorry about that. 
Um, did, you guys, could, did you really not bring a pineapple? No, 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 no we did. I'm sure somebody's up, got a pineapple in here. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll grab one. We should have done that. Yeah, yeah that, that'd be a good idea. All right. Well, you know, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> we'll loop back around to that because it does look really cool. If you haven't already played with it, Live Recon is, uh, is pretty sick in that you can... Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, well... This is, this is how they're better than me. They label their devices. We just to pick the wrong one and do a demo on the wrong device. So label them. They also don't flash firmware after they've been working on uh, scripts on the device itself. That's a fun way to lose your work. Don't how ask often, me how I know. How often have you twice. rewritten? Uh, twice. Twice? I'm, just, I'm only going to admit to twice that you know of. Twice in front of an audience? We're going to go with that. We really should do more live hacking on Google Hangouts because, uh, yeah. It's good fun. Um, but maybe we, we Yeah, let's loop move. back around to that at the end yeah. because uh, I feel like there, there's so much more to talk about since we have been um, really hard at work with the pineapple. One of the features that we have been, that has been requested upon us for years, and I know that uh, at one point Seb was, I, I don't know if his life was threatened exactly, but this character here, I don't know if you know him, was so. adamant that Seb implement a feature for the Wi-Fi Pineapple that we are now lovingly calling PineAPE or PineAP Enterprise. So yeah, I was, I think, I don't know if he's in the room, if he is. We love you, Mubix. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think if I hadn't had it done before DEF CON, or if we hadn't ha released this before DEF CON, I wouldn't be on stage right now. I'd be in some barrel somewhere in the desert. Um, <laughs> he has a tendency to run around with wiffle bats. And if you've never been smacked by a wiffle bat, ball bat from Mubix, you, you don't know pain. <clears throat> um, right, so, so PineAP Enterprise is something that, you know, you guys all know enterprise networks are important for your job. Um, and you want to be able to... to clone them, you want to be able to capture credentials, you want to be able to capture the hashes, uh, you want domain access, you can think of more ways than I can right now because I'm on stage. Um, but uh, basically what we've done is we've uh, uh, done similar to host WP, we've taken a similar approach, you know, in recon you're going to be able to clone an access point, so you just select the access point that you want, you click clone, um, that'll spin up a new uh, enterprise access point that you'll be able to use, it actually clones, like it does a deep clone is what we call it, but basically it clones everything, it means the MAC address, it clones the exact security types, the exact settings of the access point, at least everything we can see black box approach from the outside. Um, you all right? Okay, cool. I'll just keep going. Um, so uh, the other thing that we do is uh, there's downgrade attacks, right? Because you all have fought with MS Chap and cracking MS Chap is kind of annoying. So what we did is we uh, we have a, a downgrade attack to GTC. We also have uh, uh, basically on iOS device. I know that like shout out to Sense Post. I don't know if anyone is here. Singe? No. Cool. Uh, either way, um, basically uh, we I'm losing. Don't judge. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. It was interesting how like that works. You know, the same thing uh, worked uh, recently with the x86 exploits, where it's like multiple researchers all in the, kind of the same wavelength at the same time, and right. uh, it's really cool that we're all going in kind of a similar direction too. Yeah. So sorry, I, I it's been a really long time, a uh, really long. I can't see, I'm I'm not doing well today. He's out of words. Very much so. But um, more water and I'll feel better. Um, so, so the uh, downgrade attacks, those are kind of sick because on certain devices you literally get creds. It's yeah, just so like, oh, plain text? Here's the password. And this is supposed to be the enterprise stuff, the stuff that's actually more secure. How is that possible? Uh, it's a, it's a so it's actually, vendor it, implementation, right? Correct. Yeah, vendor implementations vary is that thing we quote all the time. But to be completely honest, um, it's iOS. If someone from Apple is here, go fix it, please, because... My God. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, you should probably prompt for certificates when you join a network and uh, not downgrade anything to plain text passwords because that's cool. Um, so we have that though, which is nice. Uh, we're also working on something. I know it's in the future section, but while we're on Pine APE, I think it makes sense to talk about is um, because SensePost talked about it yesterday, and this was one of those examples where uh, we had research that happens at the same time, happened with Mana and Pine AP at the same time too, back in DEF CON 22, I think it was. So we have a similar example here this year. Um, 
where we basically have a, a relay attack, right? So we can uh, perform, it's not released yet, but it's coming in the very, very near future. And it's a way that you can um, man in the middle a device that wants to join an enterprise network and relay their MSCHAP credentials. You gain access to their network and uh, you don't have to crack the credentials because you're on the network and the device is connected to you. So you're the man in the middle, um, which is, gets you most way there, right? It's a lot of fun. So I'm really stoked for uh, the PineApe, the PineAPE, and uh, just let's hear it for the Wi-Fi Pineapple team because Enterprise has been a long time coming. <laughs> now it, it's kind of interesting that the Wi-Fi Pineapple, known for you know all the awesome fun stuff that it does on open networks, now has leapfrogged to doing Wi-Fi, uh, to doing WPE, sorry WPA Enterprise kind of missing something in between. You want to talk about some of the new stuff that we're dropping today? Yeah, so um, I guess the first, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going. Um, I guess the first thing, you know, so we do open, we do WPA Enterprise. There's another one that we should really be doing out of the box, right? So just WPA Personal. And um, we, we got tired of using tools that capture handshakes unreliably and, you know, will, you know, have everything but don't verify that message for. I'm not sure if, if you know. Oh, that's the worst. Has anybody ever gotten the wrong handshake and then you're sitting there with like a ton of graphics cards or paying some exorbitant fee for somebody else's ton of graphics cards and then suddenly, you, you, no, you're not going anywhere. The hash is useless. Right, and we want to avoid that, right? So we want to make sure this feature was rock solid, but really simple to do. So another addition to the Wi-Fi panel, which we're releasing today, is a, uh, you know, again, in the Recon Live view, when you go there, you'll be able to click on a network that has an uh, WPA, uh, or sorry, an access point that has WPA uh, security settings. You're gonna be able to click on that as a drop down and just say, uh, capture, um, uh, capture handshake. And so that's all it does. It captures the handshake. You have a little button that'll de-auth everything that's like connected to it at that moment, but only the things that you see in the view, because again, we don't want to get collateral by accident, right? And thank you so much. Um, and uh, and uh, then we present your handshake. So on average, it takes about five seconds-ish to, to get some credentials. Is that correct, ish? Yeah, don't try here because we've tried that before and that just RF nightmare in the wireless village. Um, but yeah. Yes, and also, you know, speaking to that, uh, one of the things that could be very useful there is a deauth and that is much more reliable the deauth mechanism. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So before we uh, we kind of did a bit of an overkill deauth attack, which resulted in a worse experience. So we've throttled that down a little bit, and now deauth works really reliably, which is great. Yeah, it's funny, just that sweet spot where it's just right. It's like the porridge. Uh, speaking of things that are just right, the Nano and Tetra now have a unified code base. Woohoo! That is so inside baseball, it doesn't affect anybody, but it means we can build things faster. A lot faster. Yeah. Uh, so, speaking of building things faster, what are we going to build next? What is coming up in the future? That says to future, very small. And the GIF is missing, or the, the image is missing. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, well. All right, so um, we, uh, I, I, couch fault over there, finished a little bit early, um, you know, pre-DEF CON, and so I set him loose on, uh, on 802.11, go nuts. And uh, within a day, he came back with about five attacks that'll absolutely break Wi-Fi, as in like deauth-ish, but not. Um, so that's awesome, because that took him a day or two. Um, yeah, cause it gets to the point where you're like, you know, the vase has been knocked off the table and smashed into a million pieces. And then you came by with a hammer and then you smacked all of those pieces with a lot of pieces. And now we've got like 10 new tiny hammers to smack all of those little pieces. Um, yay. Yay. Indeed. Um, yeah, the other thing that I mentioned is obviously that relay attack for MSChap V2. So that's something that's in the works that's coming for the pineapple very soon. Uh, we have... Uh, Oh, we have a, a couple of, uh, of new improvements to uh, just the, the current PineAP suite and how we do evil access points. So a way to, uh, to kind of abuse uh, uh, different channels and be on different channels and, and kicking clients off of certain channels to stop fighting the competition. Because I'm sure you've all been on an access point where, or on a network that you were trying to get people off of and onto yours and they just kept connecting back to the access point with a you know enterprise AP that's got the better signal strength and 
we're working on a way to, to kind of get around that at the moment. So we put more honey in the honey pot, right? Yeah, and all the bears love it. Hey, I'm all about bears. So uh, you know what bears love? They love fingerprinting and uh, tracking, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the next thing that we're working on. Or, well, it's one of the next things that he's working on, um, which is a, a much more reliable way to fingerprint different devices. So if you want to trail devices uh, or, or uh, track devices across a place, and you know how everyone is randomizing MAC addresses now, all the vendors are, um, we have found pretty reliable ways to uh, basically fingerprint these devices and make sure that once you connect to an access point, we can track you and see what you've probed for and what you're looking for. That's going to make everything just a, a lot simpler in general. Yeah, it means we're undoing a little bit of the work. I'm sure, you know, I'm hoping that at some point it gets fixed, but uh, yeah. Okay. So the next thing that we're really excited to announce here is something that we were talking about last year that is part of our strategic vision as we have like grown the ecosystem. You know, over the years, the, the Hack 5 gear uh, cast of characters, the woodland creatures of doom have, have gone from just a pineapple and a duck to turtles and squirrels and bunnies and octopus and everything in between. So what we're really excited is to finally have a way to manage all of that in a more standardized way and something that's a little bit more tenable than all of your discrete individual devices. So today we are very excited to introduce the Hack 5 Cloud C2. All right, so let's start with the, the like very basics. Um, it's self-hosted, so you get to run your own servers, which is, you know, kind of want that. I mean, you can run it on my server. I wouldn't mind looking at your traffic. Sorry. Oh, you know, that's a new model. You know those friends that talk? Yeah, we should just, I mean, you didn't hear any of that. Never um, mind. No, so, uh, so we've got that. What else do we have? Well, essentially, it's a single dashboard that allows you to do command and control for all of your networked Hack 5 gear. So your squirrels, your turtles, all of your current gen Wi-Fi pineapples, all in one place. Uh, so it's, it's C2, and it works, yep. and it's brilliant. And we're going to show you a demo. Yep. So we're just going to show you a demo video because um, we've uh, not sacrificed enough to the demo gods to make sure that this goes over smoothly. Th this would have here. been at least two or three laptops of sacrifice. Yeah, just, one is not enough. It's, so. it's not. It never is. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. And I know I gave like you know Dallas a shout out and uh, and Couch Vault over here, but uh, that interface, that beautiful thing you're about to see, is all Foxtrot. So. Clap for him. You, you guys haven't even seen it yet. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll just paint a picture for you. It's a black background with bright green text with little boxes. Again, I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> so it's kind of modern and new. And here you can see all of your devices connected. Catches. You can add and delete devices very easily. Simply nickname your device. This is the one in the hallway. This is the one in the reception whatever type of device, and we'll add to those as we create more Hack 5 gear. And specifically for the Wi-Fi Pineapple, you have complete control over Pine AP and Recon. So if you're familiar with managing the Wi-Fi Pineapple over its current interfaces, it should seem very familiar, but a lot sexier. And of course, recon scans and connected clients should also feel very familiar. And with this interface, you're going to be able to see all of the clients and all of the devices across the entire fleet. So if you've got hundreds of these deployed across a campus, you now have a central interface where you can see all of these. Or if you're a pen test firm that does wireless audits, you can send these to your client sites and say, here, just plug this in, and it connects back to the C2. Thank you. 
So this is, as, you, as you've seen, this is the, the, first of all, this is a demo. Um, it's released, uh, do we have a? Yes, so this is live September 1st. We're gonna have a release event. It is a cloud software package, so we're gonna have a release event in the cloud. Because also we're all remote, so you know, it's, we need to be. Um, right, but so, uh, so apart from releasing it, um, this is version 1.0. We, those who know our development cycles, we usually push out updates very, very quickly and we listen to whatever the community wants, right? So um, if we don't do that, call me out on it, please. Um, but uh, uh, we kind of wanted to see what, what you guys want with this. We have a few ideas and I'm gonna, gonna run through a couple of those and things that we're going to implement. So first of all, um, we want to make this extensible in one way or another for, for you know, other people to be able to add to, so, so that's one portion of it. I think and that's kind of core to the ethos of all of our products, whether it's payloads or modules. We want people to be able to contribute to this. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that we really want to do is, um, so you know, you, you saw on the pineapple right now, there's a lot more that you can do on, on like locally connected to the pineapple versus connected to the web interface, right? There's quite a lot more because it's obviously a device that's been in development for many years. Um, this is really fresh. The idea has been around for a long time, but the actual code base is, is quite fresh. And um, we are... Um, and the framework was put together in such a way that it can be built upon very simply. There's a lot of intelligence being put into uh, just the protocol that it's using so that adding to this is going to be a breeze. And it means that, you know, as we come up with more ideas of what you can do with your pineapple remotely or even new devices or new transport mechanisms, we'll be able to adapt the whole thing to that. Right. So, for example, right now, the, uh, the way that uh, this device uh, connects to the C2 is over HTTP or HTTPS, obviously, you know. Um, even if it's over HTTP, it's AS encrypted and signed, so, you know, it's whatever we can get out for now. Um, but we're adding everything from DNS tunneling to ping tunneling to uh, TCP, smoke signals. ADP, yeah, smoke. What, what, as long as you get some sort of packet out of a network, um, you'll get it to connect back to you and you'll get updated information and be able to feed information back. Along those lines though, has anyone ever wanted to have like a wireless card across the country? Like that you can use as if you were there and you don't have to like SSH into a box and run the tools there, you want to run them locally? Okay, a few, yeah, okay. So, um, so that's something that we're working on which, which seems like a really weird idea but everyone I've, I've talked to about this really likes it. It's basically, uh, we spin up a local interface and you can run your tools on it and it'll just relay that back to the device and the magic happens in between. But um, yeah, why don't you wanna, I mean, I guess we have a competing product to air dump, but why don't you wanna air dump over your, your interface locally, right? Why don't you wanna do run Wireshark on your local interface? You don't wanna have to have a capture that you then pipe back that you then work with that way, right? So sometimes it's easier to use your own tools, so that's something that we're doing with it. It also means that all of the Hack5 gear that you already have will be able to integrate with this right now and in traditional Hack5 fashion we're releasing this to you for free so that you can start using it and give us some feedback and really shape the way that it's going to grow because we're really excited to see this as kind of the new model for interfacing with your Hack5 gear. All right, so at that point, I'm sure you have plenty of questions and we have uh, plenty of technical people here. So we've got about uh, 17, oh, 12 minutes left until uh, we need to start clearing this room out for the Hack5 meetup, in which case you can actually even uh, have some beers with us and uh, continue to ask and uh, uh, harass. What kind of shampoo does Seb use? <laughs> mm, lavender. So he's wrong. Um, for anyone that actually can Forget what I said about best man. <laughs> um, no, uh, uh, I'm not gonna, uh, this, it's, you ask me that every year. It never changes. Any legitimate uh, technical questions? W or questions about vector art? I mean, I love that. Yes. The question is, any chance we're going to see the bandwidth on the squirrel go up anytime soon? We're going to release a firmware update tomorrow that will increase your packet squirrel's 10100 network 
No, we're not. I'm being told that's not physically possible, but no, we are working on additional equipment. So the idea with the packet squirrel was, you know, to be that low barrier to entry and to be that small footprint and to be that low power profile. And for many of the things that we're using it for, like for instance, capturing all port 9100 stuff destined to that HP printer that it's buried behind. Anybody know what goes through port 9100 to HP printers? Yeah, fill your, uh, fill your USB disk full of that stuff and, and, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's gigabit. Most of those things are already 10, 100 anyway. However, uh, it is a much more complicated and expensive problem to solve, uh, both on a hardware side and a software side, and it's something that we're actively doing. I can't give you an exact date, but uh, as we have done with all of the products, we're continuing to, to look at where we can innovate, and that's one of the uh, biggest pieces of feedback that we've received on the Packet Squirrel. And so we're hoping that we can um, augment the product line with additional Packet Squirrel I. Squirrels is. is. Any other questions? So the question is, will the Wi-Fi Pineapple have full functionality through the Hack5 Cloud C2 without having to log into the Wi-Fi Pineapple's web interface? So I think, I think most things that you are going to be able to do locally, you will be doing through the cloud in the future. Um, there will be some things that don't make sense to, to have in the cloud, such as you know changing I, I don't know, clearing your uh, your page cache or something like that. You know, stuff that's managing in there. API um, keys. Yeah, there's so, a lot so, of inside baseball stuff. Yeah, so so stuff that's specific to your local access, right, is probably not something that you have to bother about anymore. Stuff like being able to change your MAC addresses, being able to set up different ways to get internet, being able to configure those things, um, configuring rekeying, reconfigurations, changing where the C2 goes, firmware updates via the C2, and stuff like that. You'll see all of that being rolled out. So the answer is pretty much yes. Anything that's applicable will make it to the C2. There was a question in the back there earlier. What about multi tenancy? Yes, absolutely. So um, right now it's a single user. Um, but it works across, like if you share that user, which, you know, don't do that, but if you share a user amongst the company, um, then yes, obviously you'll be able to use the interface and nothing will conflict with itself. So at least we have that covered. Now in regards to the actual uh, multi-tenancy, that is something that we will have in the next version that's going to release, or actually we might still be able to put it into that version because it's a database and I can do a database in a day. Um, but uh, yeah, so if that's something you guys want, sure. I know that that was like a, you know a big thing when you could do the, the similar stuff, um, multiple red teamers on a single engagement using your common pen testing frameworks, and uh, we would be happy to hear more from you if you've got time later on to let us know your specific use cases. Uh, and along those lines of the multi-tenancy, we will also have multi-site support, which means basically you know you have your different uh, working sites, and you'll be able to select the different areas that you've deployed the things in, and so then you have multiple pe people working on the same cloud server, but with different things. Right, which is good for me as the pen tester to be able to see the difference between the pineapples that I have planted at Seb's house versus the pineapples that I have planted at Couchfault's house. You should look under your bed. <laughs> Has anyone seen a cow? <laughs> There is a small stuffed cow. There's a reward. It's $100 if anybody would like to turn in a small stuffed cow. I think you'd have to fly to Oakland really quickly. <laughs> if you conspired with her. Ah, no. I did no such thing. I didn't want to cause any tension. Yes. Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? The day's been very long. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there's actually, so even though the Bash Bunny, for example, isn't a networked device, there is a, uh, a thing, I guess we can talk about that because we talked about other Why things. Um, so I, uh, has anyone ever made a proxy using WebSockets? Like, have you oh, ever proxied on. stuff over HTML? Yeah, it's fun, right? Um, hey, so no, come on. Sox 5 proxies. This is the best, right, guys? 
who doesn't love proxy chains through your proxy chains? I, you know, honestly, I just RDP to a host and then VNC from there into the next thing. So, so imagine all you need to do is open a single HTML page uh, anywhere, be it locally, be it remotely, be it wherever, and be able to pivot through the HTML page, literally HTML page, um, well, JavaScript, you know, but a blank page that'll just tunnel your connection. So basically a VPN, but with a hop over HTTP, uh, sorry, uh, an HTML page. In which case it's technically possible to network the Bash Bunny in a way that has never been done before. Correct, which was originally the idea on like how do we do updates and so on without you having to mess with internet connection sharing, which is difficult across different OSs, and we thought, hey, if you could just, you know, double click an HTML page, you'd be happy, so. Right, and this is really fun and experimental, but opens up a world of possibilities when you think about the bring your own network attacks where you can do things like captive portals to automatically open pages on the hosts, even potentially if they're locked. And um, I think that that's something that we'll continue to explore. I know that that's something that's kind of proof of concept stage right now. Uh, so I can't wait till that comes to fruition. But that's a great point because it's more than just squirrels and turtles and pineapples. There, there's a lot more to the ecosystem. Yep. Yes, back here. So, okay. The question was about the Wi-Fi pineapple Mark IV that uh, came out in uh, 2014. Yeah. Um, so 13. it's a single radio device by default, right? So if you add another radio and you add more power and you add more RAM and you add more, you know, then we could start porting back features. But without you making a really weird Frankenstein device, that's not repeatable. And yeah, so basically, no. But to, to answer, I would, to, I would, okay. So to answer a different question, we're we're really focused on adding the features that is going to have the biggest impact and spending our time in a way that's going to help the the vast majority of you. And we know that there's a lot of really cool edge cases. And trust me, we've gone down so many edge case rabbit holes just because we're hackers and we love to see things blink. Um, but we also want to provide you guys with the tools that allow you to get the job done because we've got more important things to do, like playing Counter Strike Go. Uh, Which we can do now because we've got. That. Right, 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 right. But, but also, I mean, we want to get the hack done so we can get paid. So while yes, that is technically feasible, and the problem with asking a hacker if they can do something technically feasible is we will rise to the occasion and do that. But then we will ignore the base that is using the current gen stuff that we should really focus on uh, adding features to. So that's where we're going to spend our energy. So the question is whether or not there's going to be any obfuscation in the data transmissions between Hack5 gear and the Cloud C2 so that anybody eavesdropping in between uh, would be able to know that, oh, hey, there's a bunch of Hack5 gear in your network. Seb? Yeah, so um, uh, the answer, I guess, for the first version is kind of. Um, it's encrypted and signed, which means that it looks like any data leaving it's, it's garbled, right? You wouldn't be able to really identify that this was going to a C2 unless you hit the IP address and, and you know, worked out what was happening there. The, excuse me. Yeah, I'm really not doing well tonight. Um, Water. Yeah. <clears throat> also, uh, this wouldn't really apply to a Land Turtle 3G. Have I mentioned how many fun stories we've heard so far about the Land Turtle 3G being in fun places? If you are one of those, whether you have shiny shoes or not, and would like to tell me privately about the fun places that your Land Turtle 3G has been, I'm all ears. Lips are sealed. Go ahead, Seb. Right, so, but back to your question, right? So the, <clears throat> the obfuscation, um, uh, we can do things to make it look more like the current protocol that's going over. Right now, um, there's uh, two ways that we do it. The first is HTTP. This does not look like, I mean, it's an HTTP request, but the body is encrypted, so it doesn't look like your standard HTTP traffic, right? Um, the other thing that we do is we do HTTPS, obviously, which is the default mode, which hopefully you all use. Um, and yay, let's encrypt built in. Um, but the, uh, uh, the, I guess the, the point is that if you do that, then yes, it is. If we're doing uh, uh, egress through uh, pings or through uh, uh, DNS and so on, then it gets a bit finicky because you have to make it look as real as possible and they're going to be real requests. But obviously, if you look at the payload, you may realize that this is not um, 
And again, this is the kind of place where we really rely on you guys for the feedback because it really depends on the engagement. And for many engagements, we're hearing feedback like, hey, that doesn't matter. I just want to ship these to the client site. They know that they're plugged into their networks. They're here to find rogue things. That's kind of funny. Wi-Fi pineapples finding rogue things. But in any event, um, it really depends on the scenario. And so this is why we, we hope that you'll uh, give us that kind of feedback to really tell us where to go with this. And the, but before, sorry, the, the last thing I want to say, the, the idea of the egress busting isn't necessarily to, uh, to go out covertly because you can't get out of the network. Um, who has shipped a device to another location and then asked them to like open a port or had, uh, I see nods, I know those nods. Um, but basically, you know, sometimes working with clients is very difficult and getting egress out even if it's, you know, purely outbound and it's HTTP or so, yeah, there we go. Right? It's hard, right? So it's less to do with the fact that, you know, we want you to be able to go out secretly. That's part of it, obviously. But it's more to do with the fact that if they allow HTTP out, if they allow web sockets out, at least then we get a streaming socket that looks like HTTP, right? If we get UDP, TCP, ICMP, whatever we get out, we're going to try to get your connection back so you can get your job done. Yeah, a lot of the focus on the underlying, you know, um, framework and uh, is about the reliability aspects because we've heard the horror stories where the laptop gets sent to the client site, oh, just turn the laptop on and then we'll be able to pivot through and do the pen test on the network. And then we hear the terrible stories about how many days and weeks go by and the late night remote sessions because they're in a different country to get everything working. So right now we're just focused on that aspect. Yep. I uh, think you were we up had, before earlier. Yeah, here. The so question the is whether or not after deploying Hack5 Gear on the network there is ability to disable the reset functionality. I'm assuming you're talking about in regards to the moment where, oh crap, the Hack5 Gear gets found and now they're doing forensics work on it? Nod? Yes? So they, can't oh, so they don't like reconfigure. They go, ooh, free pineapple. Yeah, absolutely. So there's that. Um, the current way that we do configuration is via configuration file. So I'm not sure if the video showed it off, but there's a little button on the side that says download setup data or setup. You click that button, then you click on download the file, you get the file back, and you just either on the pineapple, there's a web interface for it where you just, you know, upload the file and it's done. On the turtle and the squirrel, you just put it either on the USB or SCP it over. Um, so that's the setup. We're trying to make the setup easier and easier as time goes by. Um, but we're also working on things like rekeying so that, you know, if data is in transit and it was logged, you know, that it has been rekeyed and stuff like that, right? So we're trying to make it as, um, as hard as possible to, to, you know, go and, and recover data and so on for anyone that does find the devices. Um, but again, like things like being able to reset it, reboot it and so on, it'll always try to come back in that state. Same with firmware updates, right? Firmware updates, we usually always wipe everything. For when it's deployed to the cloud controller, we don't wipe everything. It just wipes the things that it needs to wipe and the things that are important for the cloud connectivity and it'll just restore back from the, from the cloud. Could probably also disable the reset switch. Meh, maybe. But yeah, it, it is, but yeah. yeah. So the question is, is it going to have comprehensive auditing and uh, logging so that you can find out which of your red teammates messed up? So I'm notoriously bad at logging, but uh, thankfully we have this guy here who logs everything. Um, you should see his debug output for the client. Like, just do like, what is it, like, dash hex or something like that? Yeah, basically. Uh, but you, you see way more information than you ever need to see. But we are going to have stuff like that in the server too. Probably not for version one because that's a whole thing where we need to figure out how do we do it in a way that it is actually safe and logged to a proper database and doesn't die when you know, something breaks and we don't want to corrupt the whole thing. So it takes a little bit more thought, but that's something that we're, we're going to have. Yeah, and this is the kind of stuff where we want to hear like what is the interoperability that you're going to want to see with this with the other products that you're already using where you're going to actually be able to leverage this in your your organization to its fullest effect where it can plug into your existing infrastructures. Yeah, like your CM or something exactly. like that. Exactly. Right? So yeah. anything that's relevant we'll try to try to pull in and export it to those type of formats. So so please let us know you want it integrating with your CM. So 
So the question is, I, am I understanding that your question is, how is this going to be hosted? Or deployed. OK. Right. Sure, it's cloud-based. OK, um, right now, it's on your cloud, as in go and find a VPS, an Amazon AWS, or whatever you prefer. Or, or your local machine. Or your machine. Like it could be localhost. Uh, I've been to 127001, and, and it's a great place to be. Uh, you yeah, can run it Dawson. there. And how do you run it, Seb? This is brilliant. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to annoy these three a little bit. Um, who here programs in Go? You guys the, don't have anything the, to throw. The people that program in Go. How good is Go, right? This is my favorite guy over here. It's great. No, I, anyway, I, I love the language, which means that it's easy for us to do a cross-platform. It's easy for us to package everything up in a single binary. So that means you basically just dot slash run it. It's got an embedded database. It's got embedded HTML. So. I mean, it Single means file. that potentially there could be a Windows version, but he's now giving me that death stare that he gives me sometimes. I'll give you a Windows version, but only you may run it because I don't want to break your machines. In any event, this is something that you're going to be able to very easily spin up uh, a couple of clicks, automatically generating certs and everything, and adding your devices to it is as simple as clicking add, giving it the nickname, choosing the thing from the drop down, it gives you a file, copy that file to your device, you're good to go. Uh, you put this in the cloud, DNS, doesn't matter, you change it later, it's as simple as moving a web server where you just change DNS. All right, so um, I guess the only other thing that, like, along those lines that I've wanted to do is things, uh, if you do have a dy dynamic IP for whatever reason, right, we'll be able to tie in with some basic things like, like DIN DNS and stuff like that. Um, yeah, any other? What conditioner do you use? I'm more interested, which one do you use? It's a same. See, I normally don't share a secret, you know? It's just a... Uh... Yes. I missed the question. Sorry, uh, the question was, are we going to add... Uh, sorry, I do this thing where I don't repeat the question, and that's really bad practice. Um, is there, uh, uh, will there be a way to do 802.11x in client mode on the Wi-Fi pineapple? And the answer is yes. So, yes, sir. So, you want to do a Docker? The question is, is there a reason that we just run it as an executable rather than a Docker image or something of that nature, yes? So, so you can run it in a Docker. We can publish a Docker image, but it would just be, uh, uh, what's the, the, the very basic, Alpine? No, it's, is it Alpine? Yeah, okay, so Alpine. We can give you an Alpine image which has an HD, uh, sorry, a network stack and the binary, right? Like we do that. But um, really the reason why we didn't is because it's up to you. If you want to deploy it in Docker, deploy it in Docker. If you want to deploy it locally, do it locally. If you want to deploy it on a Raspberry Pi, you could do it on a Raspberry Pi, right? So that was kind of the idea behind it. There's no dependencies to it either. As long as you've got a, well, it, it's Go, it runs on Plan 9, you know? So it's, or does it anymore? Anyway, either way. It runs on everything, almost, and um, it doesn't require a database to set up, so there's no MySQL, it just creates a file and, and it you know, uses that as a database, obviously not just crazy. All right, we're gonna take one or two last questions here as we are much over on time. Oh, brilliant. We nailed it. One more? Hmm? Hack the planet. Hack the planet, indeed. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for being a great audience today. Thank you for giving us the energy to continue to make these awesome products. Thank you, for, thank you to our amazing team, once again, for working tirelessly to bring you guys the awesome new Wi-Fi Pineapple features in the Cloud C2. All right, as always, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Sebastian Kitten. Trust you, Technolust. Stick around. We're going to have a little shindig. I think there's an open bar. I hope there's Woo! an open bar. And, uh, yeah, all right. We're going to have to play musical chairs and get these chairs out of here. But thank you guys for coming. Stick around for the Hack 5 meetup right here.